Good afternoon from College Park. We just saw the spring football game. Hey, Maryland won. I'm Wayne Viner. This is Mason Viner. Got Bruce behind the camera today. You are listening to the Jack Litch Law Group. Big dog post-game show here in College Park. Mason, what'd you see today? Um, it was different. It was back on Maryland Day, a little bit bigger crowd. I don't think we've seen a spring game, like a true spring game, in a long time here. Though We had two separate teams. It wasn't that nonsense offense versus defense. It was an actual game. And, you know, this team's waiting on a lot of their key parts to either come back from injury, transfer in, or start up school here in the fall. So it was a nice snapshot, but can't put too much stock in it. Well, the snapshot that I got was McFarland's a really good running back. Tyler DeSue and Bortenschlager seemed to take its steps forward. Brian Cobbs had a good day at wide receiver. Certainly some positives from this. I think on the negative side, the defense wasn't as strong. I mean, it's Maryland playing Maryland, so one side's going to win here. But today, the offense seemed a little bit ahead of the defense. I like what I saw to Javon Leak. I like throwing the tight ends. I like Tyon Fleet Davis. The offensive line looked good enough. I'm looking for a little more impact on the defensive side. Uh, from what Coach Loxley said, do you think he seemed pleased? We got to go in the defensive coach's room and listen to him talk today. I think he did. I think um, what he thinks is that there's just a lot to work on. You know, they've started off with the culture here. It's a, it's not normal. W which it's part an, isn't normal? Changing coaches and changing cultures? Changing coaches isn't normal because what it seems to be, and more so I think now than ever people are willing to talk about it, is the last coaching staff did not have a very positive outlook. They weren't positive. They solved their problems with negativity. And Loxley is kind of the exact opposite. So you had to start with the change with that. And then that takes, you know, one, two, three weeks. And then... And that's and then all they've could, been here. Yeah. So and then... Yeah. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Turps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. So it takes time to change the culture. I think the kids are buying in on it. They talk without being asked about what a good family atmosphere this is. It's a little bit windy. We're here all day. We're going to wrap it up with the Hopkins Maryland lacrosse game. And to talk about that and to talk a little big dog after this commercial break, we'll have the sports maven himself right here in College Park. In coming to the Jack Litch uh, Law Group office, I felt very at ease. Um, I was treated very kindly, and I felt that this is the person that I wanted to work with. As you just saw, our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust, and we have, with great results and great service. Call the big dogs, the Jack Litch Law Group. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the DC Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301 251 2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Back here on the Big Dog post game show, it's Bruce Posner. Yeah, I want to take a minute before we get into the game. My opinions of the game, you two covered it pretty well, to thank Rick Jacklich and the Jacklich Law Firm uh, for now sponsoring our videos. And Rick is is deep and heart-filled Maryland fan as there is. And we're all big dogs now, right? Woof, woof. 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 All right? And, uh, Rick, we love you. I know you're in China when you're going to watch this, but uh, you'll be along with us on a lot of the football shows, and we look forward to that. This is what I saw today, all right? I saw camaraderie between a squad. That post-game award ceremony when everybody was cheering for everybody. Right, and here are a couple of pictures of that up on the screen now. Right, and you had uh, Javon Lee talking about how much he loves uh, Anthony McFarland and the wide receiver and everybody praising Tyler DeSue and Max Bordenschlager. Those guys have advanced. I know, we don't know if they'll be quarterbacks, for Maryland or starting quarterbacks, but you know what? 
they held themselves up well today, Wayne. They and did. the receivers did, the running did, and yeah, they were a little bit ahead of the defense. And to a man, they praise the culture that Mike Loxley has created. One more thing, and then we'll sign off with a couple big lacrosse games coming. Wayne, it was the biggest spring football crowd in recent memory. Yeah. I had to put it at probably around 10,000, 8 to 10,000 people. That lower deck on this side was filled, and it's because of the excitement that Loxley has generated. He's done a great job. This was a great start, and most important of all, no injuries. No injuries today. There were a couple hundred recruits here filling what used to be the family section, the bottom of the, the first section here at Maryland Stadium. And that was really cool to see as well. Uh, the red team beat the white team 28-17. We're going to be back for lacrosse. What do you have for that tonight? Man, we got two great games. We got the women playing at 4 430. Uh, the Johns Hopkins women against an undefeated Maryland number two ranked team in the country. And uh, it's Maryland's last game. They got everything locked up. Hopkins certainly is a top team, will be in the tournament most likely. But Hopkins has given Maryland some headaches over the years, the women. And that's not easy to do, but Maryland is so senior laden, that is just unbelievable. Look out for Kelly Hartshorn. She's been the star this year, along with Caroline Steele. But Kelly Hartshorn and Julia Bragg, both up for the tour to an award. And then we got the big one at night. Every year we look forward to it like there's no tomorrow. Hopkins. Just selected by the New England Patriots. Who? In the fifth Byron round Cowart. With the 150. All right. Byron Cowart. Who announced it? Byron Cowart just announced picked in the NFL draft in the fifth round, so that's good for Merrill. I can see the women's lacrosse goals out here. The few players straggling off the field. we got to clear out here as they're getting ready for Maryland Hopkins. We'll be back tonight after the women's game to preview the men's One game. more question. You've been here a lot more to have for the practice and everything. Is, is what you saw today an extension of what you've seen? Because you've been raving about the practices to me. Yeah, yes, but it actually was better to see it as real football. Yeah. You're seeing them run routes against real defenses. They're not stopping the play and adjusting anything. So this was a better extension, especially offensively. The offense looked better today than I've seen it look so far this spring. And we'll see How what happens. How many high school coaches were here today? 50? I must have walked past 35 coming in here. Yeah. And I didn't even you know take account. Everybody loves Loxley. Loxley has turned on this area. Yep. Only great things are going to happen. Right. right. All right. And thanks again to. Hey, it's the Big Dog Post Game Show. Thanks to Rick Jacklich and our usual cast of sponsors, Meyer Consulting Engineers, Viner Consulting of Rockville, and NPS Services. We'll see you for the lacrosse game.